in the name of God, Floyd Mechanics, Chapter 3, Integral Relation for a Control Volume, 7th edition, Frank M. White. Motivation, at first we have uh, some definition and introduction to In analyzes fluid motion, we make take one of two paths, one seeking to describe the detail flow pattern at every point in field. at every point in the field and second approach is working with a finite region Making a balance of flow in versus flow out and determining cross flow effects such as the force or torque on a body or the total energy exchange. The second is a control value method and is the subject of this chapter. We first developed the concept of the control value in nearly the same manner as one does in the thermodynamic course and we find the rate of changing of an arbitrary grass fluid properties. A result to the control value analysis called the Reynolds transport theory. So we have We then apply energy, thus deriving the four basic control volume relation of fluid mechanics. There are many applications of force. The chapter includes a special case of frictionless shaft work, free momentum, and energy, and the Bernoulli equation also described in this chapter. The Bernoulli equation is a wonderful historic relation but is extremely restrictive, restrictive and should always be viewed with the skepticism and care in applying it to the real Lloyd motion. So we are going to talk about the basic physical laws of Lloyd mechanics in next page. Basic physical laws in this time now they really get serious about flow problems. The flow statics application in previous chapter were more like for than fun than work, at least in this writer uh, reference opinion. Statics problems basically requires only the density of fluid and knowledge of the uh, position of the free surface. So 
ingress that means right the only density of flow and also the position of free surface but mass flow problem requires the analysis of the arbitrary state of variable flow motion defined by geometry the boundary condition and the law of mechanics also other maybe those maybe be some important arbitrary state of variable flow motion defined by geometry boundary condition and the laws of mechanics this chapter and the next two chapter outline the three basic approaches to the analysis of arbitrary flow problem so in this chapter we are going to talk about control volume or large scale analysis. Chapter 3. Large scale. And chapter 4. Is about the differential or small scale analysis. After five. Experimental or dimensional analysis. These three approaches are roughly equal in importance. Control value analysis. The present topic in is accurate for any flow distribution but is often based on average or one-dimensional property value of the boundary. It always gives useful engineering <laughs> estimates. In principle, the differential equation approach of uh, chapter 4 can be applied to any problem. Only a few problems such as straight path flow yield to extra exact analytical solution. But the differential equations can be modeled numerically and the flourishing field of computational flow dynamics CFT can now be used to give good estimate for almost any geometry. Finally, the dimensional analysis in chapter 5 applies to any problems, whether analytical, numerical, or experimental. It is particularly useful to reduce the cost of experimentation. Differential analysis of hydrodynamics began with Euler and Halmet in the late 18th century and there is also some enhancement in this topic of uh, fluid mechanics. Uh, as uh, we are going to chapter 3, in chapter 3 we are going to talk about the control value analysis. At first we have 
some definition for systems versus control values. All the laws of mechanics are written for a system. So, let me are written for a system. which is defined as arbitrary quantity of mass of fixed identity which is an arbitrary of mass of fixed identity Everything external to this system is denoted by the term surrounding. So, we have also a everything external. to the system is called Sony. And the system is separated from its surrounding by its boundary boundaries so we have a definition also for the system separated from Running is called feed fund. The laws of mechanics then state what happens when there is an interaction between the system and its surrounding. First, the system is a fixed quantity of mass denoted by M. So we'll consider this picture. Uh, is as first we have a system. For example, this is the system we have also and the boundary of system
the system is fixed quantity of mass denoted by m fixed quantity so <laughs> we can write m constant and as a result equals to zero does the mass of system quantity do not change? This is a law of mechanics and has a very simple mathematical form called conservation of mass. This is so obvious in solid mechanics problem that we often forget about it. In flood mechanics, we must pay a lot of attention to mass conservation and it takes a little analysis to make it whole. Second, if the surrounding, surrounding exerts a net force F on a system, so consider the system we get here. and if the surrounding exert a net force F on system, Newton second law state that the mass in the system will begin to accelerate. So if we have for example a force F F equals to A from second law of Newton I will result in the implement dvt equals to d m because m for system m is constant so we have a relation for forces from surrounding on a system Consider this equation uh, described in previous chapter, which was summation of forces on a load F from pressure plus gravity force and viscous, which was equals to minus gradient of P rho g plus equals to rho a so we can uh, we can have three dimension of uh, three component of force in x y and z directions so we can write f equals to f x m a x f by m a by f z m a z. Third, if the surrounding exert a net moment m about the center of mass of the system, there will be a rotation effect. Also, If the surrounding exert a net moment m, where h equals to angular momentum and is Here we call this equation the angular momentum relation. Note that it is also a vector equation implying three scalar equations such as mx, my, and nz. For an arbitrary mass and arbitrary moment, h is quite complicated but contains nine terms. 
In elementary dynamics, we complete commonly treat only a rigid body rotating about a fixed x axis. For which this uh, relation reduces to mx equals to Where omega x the angular velocity of the body and i is the its mass moment of inertia. Omega is the angular velocity of the body. Mass moment of inertia. Unfortunately, flow system are not rigid and rarely reduced to such a simple relation. Fourth, if the heat, the fourth relation in the Flowing mechanics is related to what? If we will be show it by delta Q if heat. Delta Q is added to the system or work delta W is done by the system. The system energy delta DE must be changed according to the energy relation of first law of thermodynamics. So we have this relation. Where D is the change the energy system First, this relation is the first law of thermodynamics. This relation also uh, like man conservation, mass conservation, which was for a system. This is a scalar relation having only a single component. We write with single scalar Finally, the second law of thermodynamics uh, re relates entropy change ds. So the second law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics relates entropy change ds to heat added to the system and absolute temperature. The relation is the 
entropy change greater than uh, heat to the system or temperature of the system this is valid for a system and can be written in control value form but there are almost no practical application application in fluid mechanics except to analyze the flow loss detail All this law involves thermodynamic properties and thus we must supplement them with the state relation. The state relation of thermodynamic properties such as P equals to P rho and T and E equals to E and T for the particular fluid being studied. In the chapter 1, we have some definition for properties, uh, thermodynamic properties. Although thermodynamics is not the main topic of the fluid mechanics, it is very important to general study of fluid mechanics. Thermodynamics is crucial to compressible flow, which will be described in the chapter 9. The students should review the first law and the state relation on those chapters. The purpose of this chapter, chapter 3, is to put our four basic law into the control values. Let me write four basic laws. to the linear momentum relation the angular momentum relation the energy equation. All these four basic laws will be described in this chapter. Wherever necessary to complete the analysis, we also introduce a state relation such as the perfect gas law. The previous equations related to fluid mechanics apply to either fluid or solid system. They are ideal for solid mechanics where we follow the same system forever because it is represents the product we are designing and building. For example, we follow a beam as a deflect on the load. We follow a piston as in it oscillate. We follow a rocket system all the way to the Mars, for example. But fluid systems do not demand this concentrated attention. It is great that we wish to follow the ultimate type of a specific particle of fluid Instead, it is likely that the flow forms the environment whose effect on our product we wish to know. For three examples just cited, we wish to know the windows, for example, of beam, the float pressure on the piston, and the drag and lift load on the rocket. This requires that the basic law be written to apply to a specific region in the neighborhood of our product. In other words, where the float particle in the point go after they leave the beam is of little interest to a beam designer. The user's point of view underlies the need 
for the control volume and laser of this chapter. In analyzing its control volume, we convert the system log to apply to the specific region which the system may occupy for any instance. The system passes and other systems come along, but no matter. The basic laws are performed to apply to the this logical region called a control volume. All we need to know is the flow field in this region, and after simple assumption, we will accurate enough. The flow condition away from the control volume are then irrelevant. The technique for the making such localized analysis is the subject of this chapter. Volume and mass rate of a flow. As first, we are going to have some definitions to start the integral form of solution form of control value volume and mass rate of flow All the analysis in this chapter involve evaluation of volume flow Q or mass flow M dot passing through a surface defining in the flow. Suppose that the surface is in, in this picture. Suppose that the surface S in this picture surface surface S. is a sort wire mesh through which the fluid passes without resistance how much volume of fluid passes through S in unit time is the question volume of fluid passes through S in unit time. If typically V varies with position, we must integrate it over the elemental surface DA, which shows also this picture. This is DA. Also, typically V may pass through DA at any angle theta of the normal let n the defined as the unit vector normal to dA as shown in this picture there is a unit vector here let n be defined as unit vector normal to dA then the amount of fluid sweep through dA is time dt is the volume of this slanted parallel pipe such as this picture here so we can write the dv this is volume dv on dt equals to v So we can write dv on dt equals to v dot n multiply to dA which is also v dA cosinus theta. We can write dv equals to v dt dA cosinus theta or dv equals to 
B dot N D A B theta. This relation shows the volume rate of flow through an arbitrary surface S. The integral of dv on dt is the total volume rate of flow Q through or through the surface S. So the integral form of the V had this relation. dv on dt equals to dr and which was equals to dtr cosinus theta the integration shows q equals to integration of dv equals to integration b dot n and take the total volume rate of flow name it as total volume rate of flow We could replace V dot N bad is equivalent V N, the component of V normal to D A, so V N equals to V point N, the vertical of V normal to D A. But the use of the dot products allows Q to have a sign to distinguish between inflow and outflow. By convention, throughout this book, we consider N to be the outward normal unit vector. So in this book, outward normal unit vector. Therefore, V dot N denotes outflow if it is positive and inflow if negative. So, V N is positive is in outflow and V dot N negative in inflow this will be extremely useful housekeeping device when we are computing volume and mass flow in the basic control volume relation volume flow can be multiplied by density to obtain the mass flow m dot so mass we can write we have for example, m equals to rho v from previous knowledge, and we can m dot equals to rho dv on dt. So we can write m dot equals to rho. We had a relation for v dot n dA. This is a relation for mass rate flow to the control volume if density varies over the surface it must be part of the surface integral so we have the 
mass weight. M dot equal equals to if density and velocity are constant over the surface S, a simple expression results one dimensional approximation. M dot equals to rho Q equals to rho A B one dimensional one dimensional approximation is for example a pi. The <coughs> next video the next video is the concept of the Reynolds transport theorem. This is the end of the video number one, related to chapter three.